Have you ever wondered why your utility bills seem to be climbing even as you strive to conserve energy? Well, you're not alone. It's a question that's been plaguing households across the world. Today, we're going to unpack the concept of rising utility costs, what they mean for you, and why they seem to be on an unending upward trajectory. First off, let me clarify what we mean by utility costs. These are the charges you pay for essential services like electricity, gas, water, and sewage. They are as unavoidable as taxes and as essential to our daily lives as the air we breathe. Now imagine this. You've been doing everything right. You switch off lights when you leave a room, you've installed energy-efficient appliances, and you're careful about your water usage. And yet, every month, your utility bills seem to be playing a game of how high can you go? So why are these costs rising? Well, there are several factors at play here. One major factor is infrastructure maintenance. The infrastructure that delivers these utilities to your home isn't free. The pipes, wires, and systems need regular maintenance and occasional upgrades to keep them running smoothly. This upkeep costs money, and these costs are passed down to the consumer. That's you and me. Another factor is inflation. Like everything else, the cost of producing and delivering utilities goes up over time. As the cost of raw materials, labor, and other inputs rises, so does the cost of the utilities they produce. And then, there's the issue of supply and demand. As our population grows and our consumption increases, the demand for these utilities goes up. And when demand goes up, so does the price. So as we can see, rising utility costs are a complex issue with multiple contributing factors. Understanding these factors is the first step in navigating this challenging landscape and finding ways to manage and potentially reduce these costs. Now, how about when the government steps in to stimulate the economy? Does it really help the average citizen? Economic stimulus, a term that's been thrown around a lot lately, is essentially a set of measures implemented by the government to encourage spending and economic growth. It's like a shot of adrenaline into the heart of the economy. These measures can include tax cuts, increased government spending, and lower interest rates, all designed to put more money into people's pockets and encourage them to spend more. But here's where it gets interesting. While these policies are designed to jumpstart the economy, they can also be a double-edged sword. Let's take a closer look at some recent examples to illustrate this point. The government, in response to a downturn, might decide to inject billions into the economy. This money can stimulate growth by creating jobs, boosting consumer spending, and helping businesses stay afloat. And in the short term, this can look like a win. More jobs mean more income, more spending, and a healthier economy, right? But there's a catch. Remember that all this money has to come from somewhere. When the government spends more than it earns, it borrows the difference, thus increasing the national debt. And here's where the other edge of the sword comes in. As the national debt rises, the government may print more money to cover its expenses. But when there's more money circulating in the economy, the value of that money can decrease. This is what we call inflation. Inflation is like a hidden tax. It erodes the purchasing power of your money, making everything more expensive. So while you might have more money in your pocket due to a stimulus, that money may not go as far as it used to. And this is the paradox of an economic stimulus. It can provide short-term relief and growth, but it can also lead to long-term inflation, making life more expensive for everyone in the long run. While economic stimulus can provide short-term relief, it may also contribute to long-term inflation. But what is inflation, really? And why does it matter? These are questions that often baffle many. Inflation is a term that is thrown around a lot, especially in economic discussions, but its implications on daily life are not always clear. Think of inflation as an invisible force, a hidden thief, if you will. It sneaks into your life subtly without you even noticing. It's the creeping increase in the price of goods and services over time, a phenomenon that's as constant as the ticking of a clock. Imagine buying a loaf of bread today for $2 and then a year on, that same loaf costs you $2.20. That's inflation at work. It's the subtle increase you see in the price of your morning coffee, your monthly rent, or the cost of your favorite book. Now why should you be concerned? Well, inflation affects your purchasing power. 
If your income stays the same while prices rise, you can buy less with the same amount of money. That's why you might hear people reminiscing about the good old days when a dollar could buy much more than it does now. Inflation isn't just about rising prices though, it's also about the value of money. As prices increase, the value of the money in your pocket decreases. It's like a magic trick where the magician makes a coin disappear. Except in this case, the coin is your hard-earned money and the magician is the economic phenomenon of inflation. To make matters more complex, inflation doesn't affect all goods and services equally. Some prices might rise faster than others. This can create distortions in the economy, impacting everything from your personal budget to national economic policies. So, while inflation is often out of sight, it should never be out of mind. It's a silent, stealthy thief, gradually eroding the value of your money, changing the way you live and spend. Inflation, then, is a silent thief, gradually eroding the value of your money. But who really feels the pinch of these rising costs? Is it everyone or just some of us? Well, let's dive into the concept of income inequality and how it's widening the gap between different income groups. Picture this. You're at a dinner party where the pie is divided unequally. Some get a hefty slice while others barely get a crumb. This, my friends, is a simple representation of income inequality. The pie symbolizes our nation's wealth and the slices are the shares of that wealth. In the last few decades, the wealth gap has grown significantly. The affluent are becoming more affluent, while those at the bottom are struggling to keep up. This disparity in income and wealth means that the burden of rising utility costs, health care, and other living expenses is not shared equally. Here's a sobering fact. The wealthiest 10% of Americans hold over three quarters of the nation's wealth, while the bottom half of the population owns less than 2%. This is not merely a result of different work ethics or levels of ambition. There are systemic issues at play here, including wage stagnation, unequal access to education, and regressive tax policies. Low-income families and individuals often spend a larger portion of their income on basic necessities like utilities and food. When prices increase, these individuals feel the pinch more acutely. A few extra dollars on the electricity bill or at the grocery store might not seem like much to some, but for families living paycheck to paycheck, it can be the difference between having a meal and going hungry. Furthermore, the economic stimulus measures, while necessary, have contributed to inflation, which further exacerbates this problem. The cost of living is going up, but wages? They're not keeping pace. This growing divide is not just an economic issue. It affects our society at its core. It creates a cycle of poverty that's hard to break. It limits social mobility, and it leads to a sense of disillusionment and frustration among those who are left behind. Income inequality, therefore, is not just an economic issue, but a social one as well. And so, how do all these factors, rising utility costs, economic stimulus, inflation, and income inequality come together? Well, let's start by imagining our economy as a grand orchestra, each instrument playing its own tune, but together creating a symphony. Rising utility costs are like the drums, setting a steady, unavoidable beat. They are the constant expenses that keep increasing, the rhythm that every household, every business must march to. Economic stimulus, on the other hand, is like the trumpet, loud and immediate. It's the government's way of injecting money into the economy of trying to keep the music playing when things start to slow down. But just like a trumpet can't carry a symphony on its own, economic stimulus alone can't keep an economy afloat. Then we have inflation, the stealthy violin creeping up on you without you even noticing. It's the slow, relentless rise in the overall price level, the melody that can quickly turn from sweet to sour if it gets too high, and finally, income inequality, the discordant note that threatens to throw the whole symphony off balance, it's the widening gap between the rich and the poor, the disharmony that can lead to social unrest and economic instability. These instruments don't play in isolation. They influence each other, they respond to each other, they create a complex, intricate melody. Rising utility costs can lead to inflation, which can exacerbate income inequality, which in turn can make economic stimulus less effective. It's a delicate balancing act, 
a symphony that needs a skilled conductor to keep everything in harmony. And just like a conductor needs to understand how each instrument contributes to the overall performance, we need to understand how these economic factors interact if we want to make informed decisions and advocate for change. So there you have it, the grand orchestra of our economy. A complex, intricate, sometimes discordant melody, but one that we all contribute to and one that we can all help to improve. Understanding these connections is the first step towards making informed decisions and advocating for change. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more insights like these.